Hi, Jesse here from Jesse Lee Woodworking, and today is a fantastic day because I am finally going to start building my new wood shop inside my barn. Now, I have been wanting to do this project since I moved into this house. However, every other project that gets in the way doesn't allow me to get started the way that I really need to in order to have a real wood shop. Now, if you watched any of my other previous series, I basically have cobbled together this works uh, space up here uh, with a combination of table saws and plywood. Well, I am finished doing that and I'm finally going to spend my time now getting my wood shop the way that I want. So behind me is the exterior wall for my barn. Now my barn is a post and bean barn. It's built with Douglas fir and it's made out of real dimensional lumber, meaning every piece of lumber is generally the exact same size as it says that it is. So that's how they're generally built, which means everything is a little bit different and also it has some real benefits. Now, this barn upstairs is 35 feet wide by almost 40 feet long. It is a fantastic workspace, but I live here in the Northeast and once it gets to be about November, this place is freezing and I can't do anything in a freezing cold barn with numb fingers. So the very, very first thing I have to do is insulate this barn. Now, if you are like me or like any other person that's trying to figure out how to do this, save your time and just follow along with me because I have spent years, literally years working in the background trying to figure out the best, most economical and easiest way to come up with a solution for insulating this barn. And what I'm going to start in this particular side, uh, side of my series is with insulating the exterior wall that faces basically my home. So the first part of this series is how I'm going to do this wall. And in general, this is the idea behind me. On my barn, much like most barns were built early 80s and even sooner, they are built with standard shiplap dimensional lumber. It's made out of pine, it's one by 10, it's overlapping, and it sits on these purlins. The really nice thing is that it sits on these purlins because if you are trying to figure out how to actually do insulation on an exterior wall, some people might say, well, you can blow in closed cell foam spray. Yes, however, you don't wanna just blow it right onto that wall because if you ever have to take off a single board on that outside wall, you are never gonna get that off. And at the same time, you're gonna ruin every bit of insulation. And so then you might say, well, I can then put maybe some home wrap on there and then spray the foam in. Yes, you can do this. These walls are one by six. So figure out how much uh, basically 160 square feet, uh, a six inch depth on the closed cell foam is. And now you're talking a very, very expensive insulation process. And that's only one wall. I have two of these, plus I have giant uh, cathedral ceilings. So I'm not going to be doing that either. So what I did come up with, however, is this. On those purlins, that actually gives me an air gap between the inside of the wall and the exterior part of the wall. Now you can see there's plenty of water standing here on this exterior part of my wall. And that's okay because that's how these are built. The inside temperature and the outside temperature really aren't that different. So these dry out relatively quickly. And the idea is I still want to be able to dry out the wood or any moisture or any of the vapors that come in between the walls. So I'm not trying to completely make a airtight uh, compartment here in my upstairs. However, I'm trying to stop wind and I am trying to stop uh, any type of cold air from egressing in through the walls that I'm going to be building on both ends. Therefore, I am going to come up with this solution. I have here some rigid foam. This is the NGX form, foam, so this is the new uh, extruded uh, poly um, board, rigid foam board. This is one inch thick. So that one inch thick board is going to sit right on top of these purlins. I'm going to cut it in into these walls. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and seal it in with the gap and crack sealant. Now, if you've ever done maybe the rim joists in your houses, this is generally how they do it. The real good uh, point that I want to make is this uh, rigid foam does not have any type of uh, barrier on it. This is basically open on both sides. It has um, uh, none of that facing on either side. And the reason it doesn't have that is because if I was to put some facing on here, then I've given that board a point to condense on. And I really don't want that. I want this board to just be up against that wall. It's not going to get soaking wet, but there will be a lot of air circulation that goes in between those purlins that will allow this board to dry off. And then that gap that I'll be sealing up against the wall will give me basically a complete airtight seal between the inside and the outside walls. Then once I'm done sealing that up with the gaps and crack sealer on all the sides and corners, I will then go ahead and lay in unfaced R21 standard um, fiberglass uh, bats. They will sit directly onto this. And then from there, I'm not using gypsum board. I'm not making a perfect uh, wall uh, for a home. This is going to be for my wood shop. So I'm probably going to be putting up half inch plywood, which will then seat as my back wall. And then from there, I'll be building out whether it's going to be shelves up top, it's going to be a bench across the front, and it's also going to be individual cabinets and shelves underneath. I am excited to finally get this started and I appreciate you following along. So come take a journey and let's get this thing started. All right, so I'm checking in on my insulation project and you can see I've made some pretty good progress here. I've now uh, put up all of the rigid foam board on the exterior wall. Uh, as I mentioned before, I secured uh, just tentatively while I was able to get the sealer up um, the board to the purlins across um, the back wall here with just some small aluminum nails. They were enough just to hold the board firmly against and in position while I was able to seal up around all of the edges. Now you can see behind me, I've filled in all of the edges as well as the seams and also any uh, nail holes that I had from the nails that I was using to hang the board on the wall and hold it in position. So now I've done the complete perimeter and interior sections of each individual bay. And now I will go ahead and put in the R21 fiberglass uh, unfaced insulation right on top of it. Now you can also see I've put up these braces here. I put this strategically just because once the uh, insulation is in, then I'm going to be putting up some uh, half inch plywood and that will serve as good nailing for the plywood. And it will also serve as good nailing for any of the um, cabinets I might be hanging up there and just give me a little extra space. And third, it will also hold in some of the fiberglass as I'm sticking the battens in there because some of these bays are larger, obviously, than the 15 inch width that I have. I was initially going to put up um, just some strips, some furring strips uh, in between the bays, but it's actually much more work than I need to. I literally just need to get these bats on the wall so that I can then put on the plywood and it'll be in position. So in the interim, if I have any bats that are uh, trying to fall down on me, I'm just gonna take some fishing line and a uh, staple gun and just staple it across just to hold it into position until I can get the, uh, the uh, plywood onto the walls. So I'm halfway there just about. So I wanted to just uh, show you what it looks like. I will show you some of the process for hanging up the insulation. And also before I forget, uh, in case you are wondering, this is the stuff that I use for the foam sealant on the edges. It's pretty common, any of the big box stores. And honestly, this stuff is really not that expensive. I think I used five cans on this wall, uh, which in, is about 160, 170 square feet uh, with all that. So really not too bad so far in terms of cost. And so let's go ahead and get started and put on some of this fiberglass uh, insulation. All right, 
I'm checking in real quick and I just wanted to show you some of the progress on the insulation. And you can see this fishing line thing actually worked out pretty darn well. Uh, I have this, it's just this 10 pound line, which is actually quite thin, but it's really, really stretchy. Uh, and I just used my uh, staple gun and just tacked it kind of like in a zigzag pattern. And obviously you can't see it, but it's enough to actually hold the insulation in place. All right, so I'm about 90% of the way through this process. Uh, and to be specific, I have 19, 30 seconds plywood. So basically just over a half of an inch. Uh, I put that up, basically put it on all of the stud bays so that I had a nice joint and a nice amount of nailing to do because you can see in some of these bays, I do have some larger gaps where I didn't actually put wood, but for the most part, I'm not going to be hanging anything up that high. If anything, I'm just gonna be uh, just putting it where the studs are. So I'm gonna go ahead and nail off this last couple of pieces and then I'll talk a little bit about what I'm gonna do next. Continuation of this insulation project that I currently have going on in my barn. Now, this wall behind me is the other side of the barn that I am currently insulated. But if you turn this camera around, you can currently see that this wall right here is my newly finished wall. And now that that's all buttoned up, I can move myself over to the other wall. You can also see that I have some uh, strips, some furring strips. They don't look equivalent. They also are not the same thick uh, thickness and material across the whole wall. I do not care because this is leftover material that I've been clearing up from my barn. And what that is doing for me is one, it's holding in some of the insulation in place because this is unfaced insulation. And number two, it's giving me a place to nail my sheetrock because this wall here is going to be a wall that I'm going to have sheetrocked and I haven't quite determined exactly what the space on this side of the barn is going to be but a majority of the space is going to be for my wood shop and this space over here is going to be dedicated to maybe something else maybe a bar maybe some extra space uh, a TV I don't know yet but what I do know for sure is that right here in this space it's going to be a new wood burning stove and the reason I have that is the whole entire reason why I'm actually insulating this entire barn is so that I can work up here through the winter in a nice warm space so I thought maybe I'd show you a little bit on the progress over here as well as how I put up the insulation it's not an exact science it's also really really simple so you don't over have to over complicate it what I will say is you need three tools. You need a straight edge, you need a uh, tape measure, and you need something that you can cut on, whether it's a four foot piece of plywood or some kind of flat piece of that old ISO board that I'm renewing. Uh, that will allow you to cut uh, the insulation on the ground and make really quick work of a relatively large project. One last thing I'll call out is I have a 12, 12 pitch roof, which is insane because it's impossible to do anything on this roof. But the benefit of that is that everything I do on this side, everything is 45 degree angles, which is great because I can use uh, and reuse pieces all across this entire wall uh, very efficiently and very nicely for all the individual pieces of insulation that fit across. Uh, both sides of the eaves and the um, part as we go up to the cathedral ceiling. Now you can see above my head, we do have uh, a second floor worth of space. Right now I'm mainly focused on this first floor because although heat rises and that's where all the heat is going to be, right here is where all the air comes in straight up through the eaves. And so the sooner I can enclose this space on both sides of the barn, the quicker this space is going to be warmer. So let's go ahead, get this finished. Couple things to note, fiberglass, yes, you should be wearing a mask. I wasn't, um, 
so noted. But at the same time, wear gloves for sure. Even the new fiberglass now, you really don't want that stuff in your fingertips and on your clothes. Wear a long sleeve shirt, that kind of stuff will just help work the process through. Number two, when you're putting in insulation, do not stuff it. The reason it has that thickness to it is that it gives it that space for that heat sink that it creates inside of these bays. So when you stuff the insulation, it takes away from the effectiveness of the depth that you are seeking. Here I have R21, plus I also have that one inch poly ISO, which I think is about a seven R7. So I really have about an R28 on the walls, which is pretty sick considering this is the upstairs of a wide open space barn right now. Now you can see on my right and my left hand side, this is the beginning of the cathedral ceiling here in my barn. If you'll watch the rest of my insulation and process for enclosing this barn and turning it into my wood shop, you can see that that part is now next. Stick around, thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next project.